Alright guys, we've got another smooth brain audition and this one comes from someone who's no strange to me and I'm already quite sure he has a smooth brain. This man was raised in Ping. What do you mean, Pig? Uh, he comes from, I think, is it regional Victoria? Basically, he comes from a part of Australia where he has the worst internet in the world. Because of that, he has been playing on the North American servers with 400 Ping on average for many, many years. And because of that, he's developed, let's say, a playstyle that's... It's a play... It... What? What's happening? It's... Well, my brain's broken. I think we may... Smoothness detected. Smoothness detected, guys. I believe we have a glassy surface. My thoughts are trying to penetrate it and they are sliding right across it. I feel like I'm ice skating on madness right now. That's how glassy the brain is of Steven. He's gone over here, built a hatchery to create a bit of creek, cancelled it, thrown the spawning pool down. Now he's hidden it because he's like, nah, they would never check here. Why would they? You can only build things here. And it's a 12 pool. This is a 12 pool. Now he's hoping the Protoss isn't looking, but the Protoss has responded very accordingly. So the Protoss is playing super safe, so it hasn't even worked. The Protoss is playing super safe, assumes he's hidden a spawning pool somewhere, because the Protoss, I don't know, is like, well, this shit doesn't add up. The Protoss really should have just been checking for the hatcheries. And the thing is, Steven should have built the hatchery there, and then he would have sold the story. This is the worst case scenario. He's doing some big brain shit. And his opponent's like, nah, it doesn't make sense. Let's just panic. And because of that, his opponent should be able to defend this quite well. Steven, like I said, has played with 400 plus ping until the Australian server came out. Um, he was always playing for many years StarCraft 2 with that crazy amount of ping. So he's been around the scene for a long time. And I'll tell you guys, he's somewhere between Masters 2 and Grandmaster, depending on how well his opponents to respond to his insanity. And I'll tell you, it is complete insanity. This man is like, everything he does is crazy. I have played against him when he was in Masters 3, and I was like, high GM Protoss, and I struggled because he's just so constant with his weird aggression. He's a guy who, one of his regular plays is to fly a Corruptor behind each base, morph them into individual Broodlords, and start sieging your mineral lines. With, like, literally, you'll be there, you'll be in this game, he's attacking you with Lings, and he's Ling dropping, there's just weird shit happening that you're not used to dealing with. And then you'll look around and you'll see literally a Broodlord behind your mineral line killing probes. And you're like, what? How did that get there? <laughs> like, <laughs> when you play against Steven, it is such a, a just explosion of weird. Thank you so much, Swiss, for your overwhelming generosity. Slap that bacon in the chat, guys. Um, so he hasn't really got any, any headway so far. Now, what did he say? He said, look, this is my secret Steven account, Masters 2 to GM, depending on the number of Protoss I face. I used to be in many of the icy files. Recently, I got really sick as EVP, so I'm experimenting. This is my latest plan I've been using on the ladder. I hope you, I hope you enjoy it. So he, he struggled with his EVP Void Ray matter, got frustrated by it, and he's been experimenting with some weird. And let's be real, guys. Steven's normal is already weird. This is already a very weird playstyle. And I, I, the thing is, where does he take it? He's forced a big response. He's kind of got to just inject and drone and drone and inject. And that's not really Steven's main state. But I do think he got better at it ever since I relentlessly made fun of him. And like 10 different icy fars for never building workers. You know, he's gotten a little better at it. I, I do say a little. He's looking for this probe so hard right now, by the way. Because he knows there's a probe somewhere on the map. And he's just found it. And he's like, oh, what the shit? How'd you get in here? The probe just walks into his base. He's like, oh, hey, were you looking for me, sir? And the queen does uh, take her down. Burrow is on the way. Okay, so we're going to go Burrow. Okay, very sexy, very sexy. So, um, forge there, sentry there. We've got an adept, a zealot, a stalker, and a zealot. This here is a piece of art, by the way, guys. This is a pe This is like a Rotterdam masterpiece. This wall off is literally like the wall off that, like, let's just... I mean, I don't... I don't... I don't want to... <laughs> It, 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 if the Zerg player was a sailor who's been at sea for two to three years, right? And and maybe while he was at sea, he didn't get to Baneling bust on anything. Let's put it that way. Let's just say doing this wall off is kind of, 
it's, it's, you know, there's a cannon, a battery, and a sentry. If you ignore that, though, and you just look at this, there's an opening there with three weak structures. There's an opening, like, it's, it's, let's just say the sailor's gonna look at that, and it's gonna be, like, some guy in the medieval days who gets to see a lady's ankle when he's walking down the street and her dress gets caught on something, and he's like, holy shit, I just saw an ankle. Oh my god! Like, that Zerg will not be able to contain himself. He will literally instantly put down a Banelingness and just be like, Zerglings! Banelings! Let's go! Zerglings and Banelings! Let's go! You know, there's, there's no containing yourself. Now, somehow Steven is containing himself, but is he really? Because he's making 24 Zerglings right now. <laughs> where the... Wait, where... Where... Where the... Where the drone... Where, where the drones go? Where... What the fuck? Where are the- where are the drones? <laughs> where the fuck are your drones, bro? <laughs> ah! Back to work, lads. This is literally what Twitch chat has been suggesting for you. They're like, Pig? Why don't people just defend Glaive Adepts with Burrow? Because then they can't see them. And I'm like, you're gonna idle your entire economy and let them just walk through your base rather than just build units to kill them? They're like, but then it doesn't even cost that much and then you can just borrow. And I'm like, this is one of those things. Like, it, it's just like, well, yeah. The, 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 if they're like, but people always let adepts in. Yeah, they're not meant to though. That's the, that's when the player's screwed up. If you're planning to screw up, you're planning to fail. Steven nods and says, that's my whole strategy. He's like, mate, I'm not a clean player. I am a sloppy 400 ping lag boy. And the trick is you got to embrace the sloppy seconds. You got to embrace the sloppy Joe Starcraft. You're just like, where are the drones? Seriously, where are they? <laughs> ah, he's not even, he's got 30 Zerglings on the map, but rather than just killing the Adepts, they're literally just like, no, no, no. We've got to wait to ambush the army. We can't go protect the workers. Oh my God, this is so dumb. His whole economy is getting idled by two adepts. This is literally the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. It looks cool, but it is so bad. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> the only advantage is the Protoss is spending so much time looking at this that they don't seem to have realized their third's been blocked by a bird circling for quite a while. <laughs> They're finally gonna build a cannon. But you know what? If he sees the cannon, he can unburrow his lings kill the cannons before they finish and then it's gonna block the third. He doesn't even have link speed. Oh my God, link speed just kicked in. He's gonna do it. He's gonna do it. He's like, quick save Larry. Larry's in there just like, oh, unstable foundation. This one's not gonna, not gonna get past the surveyors. Oh, I've burrowed myself a little burrow into the fucking place where they want to build it. <laughs> Larry is the equivalent of one of those people who climbs up a tree when they're trying to bulldoze the forest. Unfortunately, an observer comes down and shoots him. So that that he, it doesn't work out. The forest does not get saved, but good on you, Larry. He tried to save him. And uh, a void ray is gonna come in and focus down some drones. This game has gone to absolute crazy town. Nice spore tricks from Steven. He realizes, wait, I don't need to do spores. I can just borrow them. <laughs> Guys, we just saw Steven learning. He's like, okay, spore trick to save it, spore trick to save it. Then he's like, wait a second. I don't need to spore trick it. I can just borrow them as they get shot. <laughs> <laughs> Legend. Ah, oh, this is sick, dude. Steven's such a genius, man. Um, Fleet Beacon's on the way, as well as a Robo Bay there as well. Some cannons over at the third. I mean, Mass Void Ray seems good. Um, what? Oh my god, he's doing a Beyond Drop. Oh no! Wait, he's getting distracted. Oh, the, the Protoss didn't notice. Good job, those two distraction overlords. Oh my god, dude, if those got caught by the Void Rays, he was going to lose them all. He's going for a giant link drop in the main. This is so sick. He's got eight queens as well, which is enough to defend this many voids. One of them is out in the open. Brings her back, drops a transfuse on her. That means the main base is very exposed. He's going to lose his main if he doesn't split his queens right now. He has split them. Well done. So they're on the way up there. Meanwhile, in comes the link drop. Oh, shit. Omaha Beach, baby. Let's go. And uh, guess what? Maybe not. Maybe it's an unattended beach. Maybe it's more of a Gallipoli sort of situation. The Zerglings are going to unload in there. The Queens are going to come forward. The Void Rays and the Queens battling. The Zerglings ravaging the Lings in the base. A quick pull, though, from Sai Sai. Sai Sai has managed to do that. The Protoss player, though, has got to deal with this, or the production's going to go down. Looks like the Void Rays did get recalled back. Uh, I think oh, none of them actually died. 
Look at this, the production's getting depowered. Now, there's an Observer here, which means he will see the Burrowed Zerglings. So, Sai Sai there is going to deal with these Burrowed Zerglings, I think. But actually, the Overlords maybe distract for long enough. Maybe he doesn't notice. And a lot of Overlords go down at the front. Zerglings run in, and oh god, they get massacred. There's a Spire in the corner of the map. The corner of the map! This is the second time in today's auditions where we've had a, a, text, a text structure proxied in the corner. That's amazing. Um... This one over here as well. Okay, the wings are there. The observer apparently just chilling. He's gonna build cannons there. He's like, lol, let's go lads. The probes came back, they're all wounded. Oh my God, the second round. The second round, Protoss is not reacting. He's only now reacting. He didn't even notice. He's looked back and he's like, where'd my probes go? Where'd my economy go? Oh my god, Steven, you savage. He's up to 32 workers killed. These two lings gonna look for a few more burrows down there. Unfortunately, the cannon is in range of them. But there we go. He shuffles over and burrows in the natural. Oh, so sick. So sick, so sick, so sick. 19 mutilists! 22 mutilists! Oh my god. Okay, the Zerglings get cleaned up there by the Void Ray Observer. He's gonna go 22 muters now. Tempest disrupts. Remember, guys, this is pretty high level play. These guys, like I said, somewhere between Masters 2 and GM. This is like... Probably 4.7, 4.9k, somewhere in that range. Something like that, I would imagine. Um, so just under the 5k mark, most likely, though I've seen Steven well above 5k before in the past as well, depending on how well he's doing, especially in this matchup where he does struggle. 11 queens coming down to deal with those voids. The mute account is sliding out the left side of the map. They're sneaking out there. And guess what? What do we got at home? Two Tempests, two Sentries, a few Cannons. I mean, the cannons will provide a little bit of safety, a modicum of safety. I don't know if it's going to be enough. The queens are going to come up here, try and defend this. 55 drones are up. Five more dropper lords are morphing. He's going to get round two of the zerglings. A base goes down to the top. He does spot it. This hatchery gets saved by transfuse. Mutas enter the main, and they're going to dive right on top. One cannon goes down. Cannon number two also goes down. The mutas having a bit of a party. That one tempest very slowly chipping away at the mutas, but very slowly. Fleet Beacon goes down, which means there's no Phoenix range. That's the second Fleet Beacon he's killed this game, guys. He's also going to try and depower these Stargates to stop the Phoenix producing. And there we go. He's done it. He might even focus down the Void Rays. He's going to go for it. He gets one. Gets two. He's going to start to blast him down. He focus fires the sentries to try and get rid of the Guardian Field, but Guardian Shield, but he actually clicks on the wrong one. Sai Sai is going to have to tap out. And that there was a glorious Saint game of StarCraft. That was some true skillcraft, guys. And remember, this all started with the opponent literally seeing no spawning pool and reacting as if it was a 12 pool. So this Protoss player is literally... I don't want to insult them, but they did do a dumb thing, right, guys? He saw a drone go to take the third, and he's like, well, you must be 12 pooling me. Like, if you come in, you see a drone going to take the third, you see no spawning pool, no gas. But wait, never mind. He sees the drone count. That mineral line just looks so empty, right? Yeah. Okay, there, there is kind of an obvious tell when you actually look at it through the Protoss's eyes. You're like, that is not what a mineral line is meant to look like. Or you might be like, well, what should it look like, guys? Look back. You're like, mine's full. His should be full. That is clearly not full. You don't need to count them. You just need to go, well, he doesn't have drones, therefore he's got a, he's doing a 12 full. It's like, yeah, he's, he's not missing one or two drones. He's missing like seven drones, as Bullier points out in the chat. It's, it's maybe a little obvious in hindsight, and that's why the build is actually really stupid. So it might have been that's why he tried to build a hatch down there just to delay the guy coming in or something like that. But um, yeah, yeah, this is this is an incredibly stupid way to play. And what's really what I do like about this is he can spread creep here to stop that from dying. That's what's kind of cute about this. And he, he did stop that from dying, right? Right, guys? Right? I didn't actually pay attention. We forgot to check in on this. Yeah. Yeah, he skips the first inject and he's like, there you go, creep tumor creep tube before you and then the sporting pool stops bleeding out because it's off creep no longer off creep gg well played a chat is saying 10 out of 10 smoothest of them all 10 out of 10 10 out of 10 10 out of 10 9.5 out of 10 holy crap guys this must be the highest rated one you know what guys i already knew steven was a genius and i never thought to give him smooth brain qualities you know what's really unfortunate 
He's only playing Age of Empires 2 right now. But, Booyah, everyone, message him on Discord. Go, Oi, Steven. Pig would like to cast some more of your strategies, mate. Link him up this video, let him know. And guys, if he has more games like this, we will absolutely cast them because this guy's a legend. GG, well played, Steven. All right, guys, we are here with another Smooth Brain audition in the top right. We have this lovely Protoss, the Swiss. He sent in a replay of a PvP versus the Hindu. I guess he's taking inspiration out of the Muslim's book. As, do you guys think this guy's a the Muslim fan? It's got to be the Muslim, right? The Muslim, the Hindu. Next, we're going to have a whole bunch of the Muslim fans, the Catholic. Oh, these probes are not stacked on top of each other. I think he's meant to have those hiding inside each other. Is this a poorly done double probe maneuver, guys? Uh, he's going to get the gas steal. The Hindu doesn't block it. He lets him get the gas steal. I think he wanted the double gas steal. Oh my. Okay, so Swiss goes to the double gas steal. He's now going to build a pylon and then run away. He's got to get out of there. He doesn't have a forge or anything. But look at that. The probes are going to kill him. Both of his probes do go down. He's forced a bit of a probe pull, but he's not probing behind this. This is an objectively terrible build order from the Swiss. The Swiss says, hey, I wanted to send you this replay. Okay, I'm not even going to give it away. He's just basically said that this is a crazy game and that he's behind the whole game. And, and yet the game becomes absolute chaos. Um, I'm not even going to give away the units that he mentions. Let's let's take a little look-see, shall we, guys? So the Swiss there goes for the double gas steal. Now that's a Santa Claus special, right? Santa Claus and a few other players like to do the double gas steal attempt. I'm not sure if Florencio did it for a while or not. I can't quite remember. The Swiss here with a super pro game of Wall Off. Still only at 16 probes, only 14 on minerals, and has not dropped a single chrono boost. So I think we can already tell that Swiss here probably doesn't use control groups. I've actually checked, and number two is that the control group for the Nexus. So apparently, guys, the Swiss does actually use a control group, but isn't building. There's nothing happening right now. There's nothing happening. We're on Swiss's camera. Oh, Swiss is a real Florencio. Why is he looking at this probe right now? He's not probing. He's not building Nexus. He has 600 minerals. Oh God, you can see the cogs turning. You can see the cogs turning. And now, wait, wait, wait. He just grabbed a probe here and told it to build a Nexus there. Oh my God, guys, we have may have discovered a smoother surface than we've ever seen. This is beyond Florencio levels of inefficiency. Oh, he figured out the chrono, bus bu chrono boost button, the Swiss. The Swiss found the chrono boost button. Oh my Lord, the Swiss. The Swiss found the and then forgot to build any more probes. Ah, uh, back to no. Oh, oh my lord! This one, I don't think I don't think the Swiss told us their rank, but I'm gonna go out on a limb and say low gold league. I don't know because maybe it's platinum. Ah, uh, I mean because there was a double gas steal which can throw the opponent off. Right, this is plat three on the NA server, guys. That's right for anyone in gold league. Uh, he's chrono boosted while not making warp gate, by the way. Just so you guys know, doesn't have any gas mind. And once again, Chrono Boost into building one probe. And then, oh, another probe got queued up. Holy crap. The Swiss is already down five workers versus a two base opponent. <laughs> and it's just, guys, you don't even got the Nexus up. Oh my God, the macro is so bad. The macro is so far beyond bad. It's actually insane. And we've got Zealots build. Whoa, 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 whoa. Did you guys see that instant rewind? Guys, guys, guys. Okay, we're going to go to the camera of the Swiss. Check this out. Clicks a gateway, builds a zealot. Clicks another gateway, builds another zealot. Let's watch that one more time. I'm pretty sure I, they selected the gateways, built a zealot, and then clicked on the other gateway and built another zealot. This player is clicking in the command card for sure. Look at how long the delay is. And then selects both gateways again. Oh, this play is absolutely kick like there there is a thing where you can tell the player's playing like this, where they've got one hand on their chin and their hands just moving to the bottom right and they're reading the tooltips. Like you guys, they're like, Nexus. What do these abilities do? Chrono boost. Hmm. And yet knows how to queue up three gateways at once. Oh, this is, yeah, this is like Florencio. 
It's a mixture of advanced mechanics combined with absolute, absolutely terrible mechanics. It's like, oh, and then queues up three gateways and queues to mine from the, th the, the, the proxy base. It's like, it's a mixture of like the worst execution you've ever seen with some like high level genius shit mixed in. So definitely looking a little smooth brain here because you're already down 13 probes despite nothing happening. It's a four minute 42 zealot pressure. For those who don't know, Warpgate could have finished a minute ago for either of these guys, even if they went Nexus before Cybercore. Um, uh, yeah. Wouldn't it be funny if he kills the sentry? No! So, Dehindu, not too strong on the micro front, but it doesn't matter because Dehindu has 42 workers and can literally just make more stuff than, than the Swiss could ever make. So it, it should be should be basically game over because, I mean, the Swiss is going five gates, charge, a DT shrine, a robo. He's on 35 supply. And these probes are just happening. Like, the, the, the funny thing is, guys, this is a hidden base, but they're rallying probes to it. The whole point of a hidden base is if your opponent walks up, and they see probes running over there, they go, oh, you got a hidden base over there. That's not very hidden. This is literally when you, 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 you're you like, oh, we need to hide in the woods, and then you just set up a fucking rave and start blasting music, and you're like, yeah, hopefully they don't find our secret encampment. Did you guys think maybe we should stop lighting bonfires and having giant parties with fucking huge sound systems thumping bass through the forest that can be heard 20 miles away? They're like, nah, it wouldn't be too much fun then, would it? It makes no sense. A corner base that you rally workers to is literal nonsense. He's now going to build a stargate and a gateway there. You, you've you gone DTs. You don't have gas for that. So he, he's going to walk DTs in now, but he's trying to go stargate. Oh, this is just pure stupidity. The Swiss is absolutely smooth brain. Nothing makes sense at all. But the opponent doesn't have detection. Uh-oh. That, that 20, 25 worker lead's gonna disappear real quick. Uh-oh. Okay, guys, the DTs are gonna ruin him. Observer does start getting chrono, but probes haven't been run away. Most important thing when you're in trouble against DTs is to run your shit away from it. Look at this, the army's gonna go down at the front and the entire economy's gonna fall to the DTs. I think the Swiss is just gonna win with these Dark Templar because the Observer comes out, not a single probe has been pulled. Oh my God, 42 workers killed, 45 workers killed, the entire army dies and that's game. That is game right there. I mean, Tehindu has so much money. I don't think it matters though. The Observer's not really joining up with the Stalkers. Tehindu's lost his entire economy. Okay, this is game over. This is plat three, guys. You know what's great? If you're in platinum or gold and you do a gas steal, that's what this teaches us. You confuse the opponent enough that their brain is broken. And then you just build invisible units and they die. Like all you need to do is just one gas steal or pylon block and the rest of the game, they're like, ah, no. Duh, I don't know what to do now. Oh. Oh, barely saves the room. Okay, so Dehindu's gonna chrono probes to try and recover. But needs to. Uh, a hallucinated Void Ray is gonna. Okay, so how does this game go on? Well, the Swiss is somehow still only on 35 probes. So somehow this base is still not saturated. There's no third. There's no units building. There's an arc on here. For some reason, there's an arc on in the main base that's gonna kill the Robo to get rid of the detection production. Okay, that's a thing. Um, the Swiss is not spending their money at all. Let's go to the Swiss's camera. The Swiss is like, yeah, I've got an arc on. <laughs> like, okay, let, let's just, at this point, we need to get inside the Swiss's mindset. Sorry, only one hand. I don't want playing. Make some more Dark Templar. <laughs> From the shadows, I come. What do you... How does this game go on? Okay, there's, there's, the thing is, Florencio doesn't kill. He actually falls behind. Problem is, Swiss has won this game, but is now showing that there's just... What are you doing? Why are you making two Stargates and a Fleet Beacon? And now you're going to take a corner base? 
I mean, okay, the crazy thing is the other guy actually chrono boosted probes and actually caught up, but then these zealots walk in, they kill a whole mineral line. Unupgraded stalkers. The Hindu making the worst unit in the game. But they're not, the, I mean, they're not the worst thing for now. If the Hindu could recover the workers, that would be big. Up to 87 workers killed in this game. DT is going to walk in again. And these DT is going to walk into stalkers. Okay, that DT goes down. And Swiss has finally made the way to 50 probes. But still not probing. Is making a mothership and disruptor. So basically, he's just trying to win in the silliest way possible. The opponent doesn't have anything, though. I need to put my other hand down my pants for 100% impersonation. Okay, so the Hindu is just making mass unupgraded stalkers and trying to recover the economy. Trying to go forge in Twilight. Trying to take a fourth base. DT is going to work on that. I gotta say, the Hindu split the army up, which is very impressive. Walks in, kills a stalker, kills another stalker. I mean, definitely the Swiss is torturing the opponent. But, I mean, finish the game, bro. He just dropped a probe there out of a walk. He could have walked it, but he picked it up. Make it stop. Someone make it stop. I don't like this. I don't like it. I don't. It's not good. This is not good. It's not good, guys. I don't like this. I don't like this. This hurts me. I'm trying to read chat to try and put some cream on my brain. Kurt says, like I said, this is campaign level 5 normal difficulty of play. I agree. This is scripted, right? Definitely not scripted. Pretty sure Dehindu just doesn't know how to build cannons and likes kind of grabbing the whole army. Over here we see... Wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry. Did we just see a photon? Have you guys ever seen a photon cannon and a mothership duel? That's nuts. I've never seen that. I've never seen a Photon Cannon fight a mothership for a while. That's kind of exciting. Looks like Mama would win. She's pretty tanky. She's like, guys, shoot lasers. So, I think what we're understanding, guys, is Swiss has no multitasking at all and likes microing a prism around to do DTs. And the opponent... Silver League Cannons! Silver League Cannons, guys! The Hindu built Silver League Cannons. Oh my god. Guys, I've started to realize Silver League Cannons are a thing outside of Silver League. It doesn't defend the Mineral Line at all. These ones do, but like they don't cover them. Like just one in the middle is some, even this one doesn't cover the left side of that Mineral Line. Can we stop building Silver League Cannons, guys? Oh, get wrecked. Get out. Yeah. Oh, oh, yes. Okay, get him. Go kill him, Hindu. Now, Hindu, this is Hindu's first time crossing the map, and is surprised to find no third base there. Unfortunately, immediately gets counterattacked by a DT Prism attack, round 17. And the army is just AF. Oh no. Swiss is like, oh, what you doing down there, buddy? Oh no. Hindu is broken. Hindu is beyond broken at this point, guys. This is. This is sad. Oh no. Oh no. Oh my god, and the observers aren't with the army, so these DTs could kill the whole army, but they're not an aim move. The Swiss doesn't know how to aim move. So they just move commanded and went, Where'd the army go? They could have killed the whole army because the observers got A moved all the way into the back of the main. And now Oh my god. And now Hindu's like, it's fine, I'll mine. What? You have a base here? That's confusing. Oh, Oh my god, and like literally this DT is gonna kill the whole army. 
Holy shit. Oh no. So I think honestly, I what I would what I would argue, and you guys let me know if you agree, is that the Hindu is doing trying to do some vibe drones to GM type stuff, right? Because the Hindu was trying to take like five, six bases, a billion probes, whereas the Hindu actually could have just made an army and moved out and won the game, like much earlier, right? But the Hindu's kind of like, just like, I gotta take another base, I gotta take another base, but isn't really used to dealing with the DT, like so many DTs. And so is just like overwhelmed by all the stuff that's happening. And, and Swiss on the other hand, 90% of Swiss's attention all game has been on microing DTs and warp prisms. And the rest is like, God, oh, I guess I'll build a Nexus in 10 gateways all in one go because I have 100,000 minerals, right? It's, it's, it's like that level of, you know, the Swiss is like 90% of my very, very, uh, you know, very middling APM is, is going to be just pissing you off with DT. And it's been effective. This is, this is a thing. And now the Hindu's like, shit, I need more production. They're gonna feed back her. Oh man. So, and then it turns into a base trade. Ooh, ooh. Swiss has no macro, the Hindu has no micro. Yeah, okay, pretty much. <laughs> I think that describes this game quite well. It's gonna be a full base trade. The Hindu has only one probe, needs to get it out and go build ex assimilators everywhere. Um, you know what, guys? It's going to go full base trade. The Swiss rolls in the main. Remember that Swiss could have won this game after getting the opponent down to no work. The Hindu recalls. Oh, that's not the point. So re recall splits his army in half. His army might have been able to win this fight front on. And where are his observers? They're all there, but he splits the army. Wait, 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 wait. That's the last building. You had a probe! Where'd the probe go? Oh, we got killed by an... A, a, wait, why was there an adept there? He, so he didn't build anything with it. And then for some reason... Oh, Swiss is like, what do I warp in here? An adept. That's the right unit for the situation. Oh, no. Well, that was a game. Um... I get a little bit of brain damage each time I cast Florencio, but this was not a little bit of brain damage. This was too much. There's a point where a smooth brain becomes so smooth that there's wrinkles. Like, I don't even know what just happened. I just know it was... Oh, I didn't like it. Uh, chat, can you all use one word to... get Everyone put your ratings in the chat. Some say I'd give that a 911. <laughs> a 9 a 911. Uh, a call, a call 911. A lot of people are saying 1 out of 10, F out of 10, Crazens out of 10, 0 0.4 out of 10, 2 out of 10. <laughs> I'm going to give it 3 out of 10 because there was some cool moves, but holy shit, finish the game when you're ahead and please stop torturing your opponent. Like, I don't know. It was just the, the just watching people who can't deal with invisible units hurts me because it's like this level of like, uh, uh, like, you know, there was a few points there where if there was just like, just put three cannons in each base, you have unlimited money. And then like getting your opponent to zero workers when you're on 40 and then just letting them back in the game. It just felt like the Swiss, I don't think really has any macro at all. It felt like bullying. That's kind of what micro versus macro players are. It hurt, it hurt you to watch. It hurt me to watch.